Hey guys, um, so this section is going to be about story sketches. And the idea is that you want to try to find a shorthand that lets you handle the drawings just once. For one thing, you may be required to turn around a sequence in a single day, and that, that could mean doing 100 drawings that day. So there's just no way you can go back to revisit your drawings a second time. So of course, you're going to do a lot of iterations, but those iterations cannot be about uh, making the drawing look better. They have to be about acting choices and storytelling choices, about finding the right way to present and perform the sequence. So one thing to look for when you're exploring and looking for um, what Photoshop brushes are going to work for you is to really find the ones that are going to give your shorthand drawing an appealing look and that very quickly let you get to the truth of your drawing. So in this case here, um, you can see I'm using this brush that gives me uh, inner variations so that I'm able to do something very light if I just want to touch on some background element that are there for mood or basic sense of scale and perspective and to really sort of lean into the eyes or just uh, whatever uh, visual accent I really want to lean into. Um, and then, you know, uh, with this uh, simple other brush, uh, I can really easily block um, some cool uh, shadows on the characters and just uh, solidify the, the figure and just also add to the mood and the sense of lighting. You also probably want to have the same very simple approach with the tones that you do with the, the line drawing, which is that um, you want something very simple, probably just one layer of gray that just lets you um, uh, separate your, uh, your your shapes from your negative space and just help you give a sense um, of lighting. Um, in this case, I'm using two different layers just because I, I you know I really want to lean into the lighting and give the sky a little bit of something. But two would be really the maximum. Otherwise, you start to render paintings and this is not a story anymore. So now the main point here is that I've done this little sketch in about two and a half minutes and hopefully that's a sketch that gives you a sense of a character, that puts you in a place, in a mood, and of course we don't know yet what any of this is about, but you know, it's a sketch that uh, tells story. And the point is I just made it in two and a half minutes, so if I have to make a hundred of those a day, then you can see how this is starting to make sense. So now we're going to add a second drawing and this is going to lead us into one of the most important concepts in drawing for story or even for animation in general for that matter. Which is that as much as we're talking about the drawings, the drawing is not what the eye is tracking. What the eye of the, the audience is tracking is the change. So like here between these two drawings we have a very obvious change, right? The, she's turning away from us or from someone who's probably standing uh, screen left uh, closer to camera than she is and so she's turning away and so we there was a change but we're not quite telling story yet because we don't really have they, th those two drawings are too far apart in concept in idea in acting it's just like there's no direct connection between them so we're not quite really delivering the story moment yet. So this leads us to our next important concept, which is that to really deliver the texture of story, um, then you need the third drawing. So the first two drawings give you the idea, the third one qualifies that idea. For instance, here, let's say we're adding this drawing in, in between the other two. Um, so she looks angry, right? So maybe some unpleasant truth was spoken, whatever it is, and now she walks away angry. So with the same first and last drawing, but that passing drawing in, in between, this change of expression, um, gives the, the moment a completely different emotional texture. So now let's say that we are keeping the first drawing the same, but we're changing the last drawing. And instead of turning away, walking away from us, she's now going into this different expression. So it's going to be one of those expressions that um, are really hard to put into words. You have to sort of feel what the character is feeling and thinking at that moment to try to kind of connect with that. But it's one of those things where words really um, only help you so much. 
But the interesting thing here is that as I flip between these two drawings, um, they're both valid and uh, a good starting point and a good destination, but there's too much of a gap between them. And it's not a physical gap, it's an emotional gap. If you look at those expressions, there is just no simple process that you can see that would take you from one to the next. It's just too much of a leap. That's because uh, in the first drawing, she is happy and relaxed and confident and engaging someone off screen, um, you know, uh, with her eye direction. And in the second drawing, she looks stressed out, kind of fidgety or shifty. Uh, the, the relationship with the other person uh, is different. So in other words, th there's at least three or four different changes that have taken place between those two drawings. And so that leads us to our next important concept, which is that you only want one change at a time. So if we were going to try to get our character um, from the first emotion to the, the last emotion, then we would probably want to break it down into different phases. Uh, a first change where first she hears someone say something that kind of triggers her. And then there's another one drawing where, you know, she goes to some sort of combative state and then kind of uh, defeat and then maybe sort of softly coming back towards re-engagement and finally get you to that last drawing with that has an emotion on it that I can't still put a word on it but I know that to get from that first drawing to that last drawing I need to go through all those steps one change at a time so that I can track the emotions and so if I and so if I took another little example here with this uh, simple little character and I was to board a beat where he hears something scary and then he gets afraid. It's the same. I would have to do it in three drawings. First drawing where, um, you know, he's just at rest or engaged in some other activity. Second drawing where he receives the information. And third drawing where he processes it by, you know, reacting, being afraid. And so, you know, that gives the sense that these characters are sentient beings. It's by having them process and um, react to information and emotion one change at a time. Something else I want to digress about for a few seconds here is uh, what I call the five line drawing. Um, and it's kind of the idea that if the first five lines of your sketch don't quite capture something true about the moment, um, then just start over, right? There no amount of going over a drawing will make it the right drawing if your very first few lines don't sort of connect immediately with it. The same approach, uh, which is based on simplicity and focus, also has to apply to your tones. And think of it as passing the baton from the drawing to the tones. Hopefully the tones don't repeat anything the drawing is already saying, but it's completing the image, uh, supporting the drama and the clarity of what's happening and doing it in the simplest way possible so that once again your audience will be able to track change. 